And let's all stand up as we welcome uh, our pastor, Pastor Lucy Painter. Amen. We may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want you to take a minute and welcome somebody who is next to you. Uh, tell them welcome uh, in the house of your father. Uh, feel at Jesus' feet. Uh, this is Glorious Power Church. This is where we serve the purposes of God in our generation. I want to acknowledge the presence of our first time guest. If it is your first time worshiping with us, you can show us by raising your hand wherever you, you are and we are going to acknowledge you. Amen. Amen. Let's appreciate we have a first time guest. We have another first time guest over there. Amen. Amen. Our uh, protocol team, our ashes will come to you and give you a welcome gift. And after the service, we'll be able to get to know you more. Amen. Amen. I also want to acknowledge the presence of my dear sister, uh, servant of the Lord, Pastor Dorothy Sedbaka. Amen. Let's appreciate her. She is here with us. And after I share, I'm going to give her time to tell us what is happening around her block. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Are you ready to hear the word of the Lord? You know, uh, we are starting a new series and it's very broad. Holy Spirit. Ever since I felt in my heart that I'm supposed to speak about this, I felt inadequate. I felt all over the place. And I did what I do to prepare. But every time I prepared and wrote notes, I, I was feeling like, nah. I don't know whether you ever felt that, yeah? You prepare, you, and then the Lord still says. And last night, as I was praying, I said, Holy Spirit, I'm not qualified to teach about you or to tell people about you because I also want to know you. And so I made a pact with the Holy Spirit. And I told the Holy Spirit, I want you to come and teach us and reveal to us what you need us to know. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, and I made a pact of letting go any past experiences, any past sermons. You know, sometimes pastors go to, you know, I had taught this somewhere. I've been teaching for, I've been preaching for more than 20 years. So if I can go to my archives I would definitely pull somewhere. I thought about the Holy Spirit. And I told the Lord, even that, I put aside everything that I know, I put aside. And I want you to have that clean slate this morning. Anything that you know, anything that you think you know, let's just put it aside. Praise the name of the Lord. And let the Holy Spirit speak to us and reveal to us what he needs us to know about him. Amen. Can we make that pact? Amen. And the worship team, you, you've led us as the spirit of the Lord one. And we were just saying, we are here. We are ready. I don't know whether that really impacted you and you thought about what am I saying? I'm ready. I'm here and I am ready. I'm ready for you, Holy Spirit. And that's what I'm saying. I'm ready for you, Holy Spirit. And so... I want to go to the book of Genesis. That's where we will begin. Genesis chapter 1. And I'll just flow as the spirit of the Lord is giving us, uh, giving me utterance. And may you receive what he wants us to receive today. Amen. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That is a memory verse that the Bible story times, uh, have said it, they know it, and every, everyone, the first thing you, you start to read the Bible, and the first thing you read is that, in the beginning, God 
created the heaven and the earth. So, but I am interested in verse 2. I don't want to talk about creation because I want us to receive an introduction of who is the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to read on, with my version, the New Living Translation. The earth was formless and empty. The earth was formless and empty. I know uh, many years ago people thought that the earth was a flat was flat and then they discovered it was <laughs> is it round or circle or oval <laughs> eh? Eh? sphere all right praise the name of the lord so we are past when we discovered how the earth was the bible is saying the earth was formless when you hear something is formless it means it got no shape the earth was formless and it was empty can you try to imagine that formless and empty darkness covered the deep waters so if you get to the um the atlantic are we next to the atlantic or pacific which was it if you get to the atlantic and you see the many waters so i want you to picture that the darkness had covered those deep waters but in the midst of the formlessness in the midst of the emptiness in the midst of the darkness there is something else that was evident and the bible says and the spirit of god and the spirit of god was hovering over the surface of the waters the spirit of god was hovering over the surface of the waters and as i was Re, re, re meditating about this the holy spirit was ministering to me that i am the spirit of god i was there in the beginning i was there before praise the name of the lord and so as we learn who the holy spirit is it is not a concept that was introduced the other century praise the name of the lord the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God and was in existence even before anything came to being. Praise the name of the Lord. So the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the water. So as we speak about the Holy Spirit, we are speaking about the Spirit of God who was there before the beginning. Amen. So now you understand why I feel inadequate. How do you tell or teach about one who was there before the beginning? Unless he himself reveals himself and says, I want you to know this of me. Amen. So as we relate with the Holy Spirit, it is important to know that he did not just appear the other day. He was there from the beginning or before the beginning. In Joel 2 verse 28, here we have heard that the spirit was hovering over the surface of the, of the waters. The, the spirit was just hovering, hovering. Hovering means it's like just moving around and not dropping, but just up there. <laughs> eh? Eh? Go shera, shera. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> yeah, teacher Tabi, you interpret that. <laughs> So hovering, amen. It, it is good when the word is entering, you get it even in your mother tongue because it, 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 it lands well. Praise the name of the Lord. So in the book of Joel chapter 2, this is a promise we are given and this is a prophecy that was prophesied by this prophet Joel. And he says, then after doing all those things, I'm going to give you an assignment for you to figure out what were those things that were to come before this 
Amen. After doing all those things, I will pour out. I want you to mark there. I will pour out my spirit upon all people. I will pour out my spirit upon all people. So this is the Lord who has a precedence of things that he will do. And after all those things have been done, he says, then the time will come and this is what I will do. I will pour out. When we talk about pouring out, we're talking about emptying, like giving immeasurably much, a lot, exceedingly, praise the name of the Lord. So this is a promise that I will pour out my spirit upon all people. And I want you to imagine the rain. When the rain pours, It doesn't pour only to the good. It pours upon all. And I want you to imagine about that. The concept of the father, the idea of the Lord giving us his spirit. Is that if and every person can become a partaker of the pouring out. There is no exempt. And then Joel says, when the spirit is poured out, there are some things that will manifest to show that the spirit has been poured out. So for you to confirm that you are in the rain, there are signs that shows, oh, you are out in the... We, you cannot deny, you cannot go out in the rain. He will teach you all things. So we see something else that the comforter the Holy Spirit does is teach. So the Holy Spirit is a teacher. He will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. So the Holy Spirit also reminds us all things. Whatsoever I have said to you. So the disciples, as they were walking with Jesus, there were so many things that Jesus was speaking to them, so many things he was teaching them, other things he said in parables. They understood some, they didn't understand some, and it was a lot. And Jesus says, I am telling you these things now that I am present because there is a time I'm not going to be present with you. I'm not going to be walking uh, as a human being on earth forever. But... In my absence from earth, you will have a comfort. You will have the Holy Spirit. And this is a promise that the Father will send the Holy Spirit in my name. Because the work that I have already begun, my legacy continues here on earth through the Holy Spirit. I have been walking among you as a teacher. But when the Holy Spirit comes, he will teach you all things. I have been saying so many things to you, teaching you so many things. And sometimes it is possible to forget. But do not worry because when the Holy Spirit comes, he will bring to remembrance, to your remembrance. He will remind you all things. Praise the name of the Lord. And, and in, in, in John 16, this is, we're going to... Um, Okay, so before we go to John 16, can we do John 14, 15 to 17? So the Bible says, and this is Jesus still preparing the church, preparing the disciples. I'm leaving, I'm going. I'm going back to where I came from. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Remember we say the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord will be poured out upon all people. But then now Jesus comes and he's giving us guidelines on how do we operate with the Holy Spirit in as much as the Spirit has been poured upon all people. Why is it that not all people manifest that they have the Holy Spirit? Jesus is saying, 
If you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the Father. I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comfort that he may abide with you forever. So the presence of the Holy Spirit with us is an answer to Jesus' prayer. Jesus prayed. Come on, tell your neighbor, Jesus asked the Father. He prayed. Because Jesus walked on earth and he understood how hard it is to please the Lord by our human nature. It is tough. It is not easy. So he's saying, I will pray to the Father and he will give you another comforter. Another version was saying he will give you another helper. Because Jesus is our helper. He has been helping. The disciples were feeling sad that Jesus is going to go and they will be left helpless. But he's telling them, no, the Father will give you another helper. He will abide with you forever. When we talk about abiding, we are talking about dwelling. We are talking about living. Amen. Staying in. Praise the name of the Lord. And verse 17 says, And this helper, even the spirit of truth, is the spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive because it sees, it sees him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwells in you and shall be in you. Praise the name of the Lord. Can you give the, me the New Living Translation so that we break this down? The, he is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. And who is the truth? Who is the truth? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So the work of the Holy Spirit is to lead us into all truth. Is to lead us into the fullness of Christ. To really understand him. To be transformed into his likeness. He will lead us into all truth. Praise the name of the Lord. The work of the Holy Spirit is not to lead you elsewhere. His work is to lead you into all truth. So that you understand the fullness of Christ. The world cannot receive him. So in as much as the spirit was being poured on all people. There are those in the world that cannot receive him. Because if his assignment is to lead us to all truth. Then if you are here outside and you don't believe in Jesus. and you, There is no way you receive the Holy Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. Because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him. I want you to look at somebody and just ask him, do you know him? And why should you know him? Because he lives with you now and later will be in you. But we are already in the later. So he lives in in you. Praise the name of the Lord. Come on, look at your neighbor and ask, do you know him? You should know him because he lives in you. He lives in you. In you. Not outside. In the days of old, the spirit of the Lord would come upon. Amen. We read about Samson and the spirit of the Lord came upon him and he was able to slay the the, the lion. He was able to beat the Philistine. And the spirit of the Lord came upon Samson and he gathered foxes two by two tied their how do you do that? Naturally speaking, with the human effort, how can you gather foxes, tie their tails, put them on fire, and set them to burn the Philistines' wheat? How can you do that? Can you do that on your own? So by and by, as we study the wonders and the things that the men of the Old Testament did, you will always find something was unique was happening. The Spirit of the Lord came upon. And I want to ask this question. The Spirit of the Lord came upon them and they did wonders. 
Now the spirit of the Lord lives in us. Where are the wonders? Praise the name of the Lord. Akina Samson. Gideon. David. The spirit of the Lord came upon. But now the spirit lives. And we heard that when he comes, we, not only prophecies, there will be wonders. We are the wonders. You know what is wonder? Is something you look and you say, ah, you know, ah. every time somebody looks at you, you should just be, ah, wow, because you have the spirit of the Lord living. How many times have people have been marveled and wondered, you know, like just look and say, wow, because the spirit of the Lord lives in. John 16 verse 4 John 16 verse 4 I continually pray that the spirit of the Lord will continue revealing himself to you the way he needs you to know him John 16 verse 4 says yes I'm telling you these things now so that when they happen you will remember my warning I didn't tell you earlier I didn't tell you earlier because I was going to be with you for a while longer. So I want you to see the connection. Jesus is still preparing the disciples. He's saying, I'm telling you this thing so that when you, when you see them happen, it, it's not going to be a surprise. I didn't tell you earlier because I was going to be with you longer. And then he says in verse 5, but now I am going away to the one who sent me. And not one of you is asking, where am I going? <laughs> Amen. There is another chapter where they really ask questions. Jesus says, I'm going. And then Philip asks, can we go where you are going? <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. And Jesus says, oh, uh, you know, I'm going to the Father. And then somebody else asks, who is the Father? Have we seen him? Do we know him? But in this part, he's saying, I'm going, but no one is asking where I'm going, but I'm going to the one who sent me. Instead, you grieve because of what I have told you. So now the questions are not there anymore. They are now grieving. They are very sad because the Lord is, Jesus is living. And verse 7 says, but in fact, it is best for you that I go away. It is best for you that I go away because if I don't the advocate won't come so if you're making a list of who the Holy Spirit is the advocate saying if I don't go the advocate won't come if I do go away then I will send him to you so I cannot continue existing here on earth I have to go so that the one who is your advocate you know what's the work of an advocate hmm? <laughs> yeah speak on our speak on our behalf and so many of us are advocating for yourself when you do have the advocate so Jesus said I have to go because if I don't go he is not gonna he's not gonna come but I need him here so let me go even if you're sad let me let me go so that I'll send him to you the next verse says and when he comes so I want you to see the advocacy and the office of the Holy Spirit as an advocate. When he comes, because now he, 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 this is where he operates as an advocate, the first thing he does is that he will convict the world of sin. He will convict the world of its sin. So the Holy Spirit... Is the one who convicts us of the sins. Amen. It is not the, the preaching of a good sermon that draws people to come and repent. Amen. If you ever preach and people got, got saved, it's not because you are really there, good, you know, up the. It, no. Tell your neighbor, it is he's the work of the advocate to convict. I 
I was I was telling people uh, of a story of one one preacher in a town called Kisi. He was giving the testimony of how he preached every time uh, open air and he would sweat and he would preach and people were not and he would call for otaku and people would not come. And at one time up after some time he snapped and he was telling us he folded his his pants, you know, like folding and getting ready to run. And he started running after people and catching them and tell them, kneel down, say after me, Lord Jesus. <laughs> and everybody would see him and run away and he would run and catch them and say, kneel, say, how can I keep preaching? And you guys are not getting saved. I, now it, you will get saved by force. Praise the name of the Lord. Mm -mm. It's not force. Those, those people you've been praying for in your family that have not been convicted of sin, it is the work of the advocate. So now you know, ask the Holy Spirit, your work is to convict the world of its sin. That is not your burden. He lives in you. But it's not your responsibility to convict the world of sin. It is his assignment. It is his duty. And then the other conviction is the conviction of God's righteousness. So, many people say, I don't want to be saved because I, I don't know whether I can stand. I don't know whether I will make it. I cannot do it. It is him who convicts the world of righteousness. The reason why you are not going sinning, 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 it's because he's convicting you. There was a time that conviction was not there. And you do anything and not worry about the repercussions. Praise the name of the Lord. But now that he is in you, there are things that you don't need a pastor to tell you, please don't. Because his work as an advocate is convicting you of righteousness. You don't need your mom or your dad to tell you that is wrong. There is that conviction of living in righteousness, remaining right with God. And then the other conviction is the coming judgment. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. To convict the world of judgment. Amen. Let's continue the next verse. The world of sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Uh, can you give me a new uh, King James Version? Why is the conviction necessary of sin? Because they believe not on me. You know, they, many didn't believe they even crucified him. But then later, we find even those that were part of the, the crew believe in him. Praise the name of the Lord. The next one, verse 10. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. So Jesus is saying, I'm going to the father. And for you to see me again, you need to be righteous. You need to remain in righteousness. The only way you can maintain that righteousness is through the Holy Spirit. And of judgment. The next verse. And of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. The prince of this world is judged you know one of the things that is very interesting and makes the devil mad is to know that he doesn't get a second chance to repent that is out of the picture for him he's already judged and that is why he wants many people to be judged with him we have an opportunity of being reconciled with god but the prince of this world the enemy is already judged and he has no chance Praise the name of the Lord. And that is why the Holy Spirit work is to convict the world of judgment. Beware of the judgment. Because it is coming. And you don't want to be judged with the prince who is already, who is already judged. Let's go to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 1. So this is Jesus promising the, the Holy Spirit, we have seen he was there from the beginning. We've seen he was prophesied he'll be powered out. And now we have seen Jesus telling us he's going to come. Praise the name of the Lord. And when he comes, what he will do. 
in Acts chapter 1, uh, this is uh, Luke writing. And he was writing to this person called Theophilus. And he's telling him about Jesus and everything going on. And he says, the former treatise have I made all the Ophelas of all that Jesus began to do and teach. And that is, he's referring in the, for, uh, the book of Luke, the one that he wrote. The next verse says, until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles he, whom he had chosen. Can we be a little bit faster? Please. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passing, after his passion, by many infa infallible. Oh, can you say that for me? Inf infallible proofs. Praise the name of the Lord. So, the, uh, Luke is telling the Ophelas, we have already written about what happened, but after he he resurrected, he appeared to many, and there was proof that cannot be denied proof being seen of them for 40 days after jesus resurrected he stayed here on earth for 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of god so this risen christ stayed with the disciples that he had chosen and walked among them and he taught them about the kingdom of god and being assembled together with them commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which has which has He, which says, he, uh, which says, He ye have heard of me. Oh, let's go back to New Living Translation. I love my King James, <laughs> but the ye, ye and thou, Amen. So let's go back to that verse 4. Once when he was eating with them, he commanded them, Do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised, as I told you before. It is understood. The other one was a little complicated. Amen. So do not leave Jerusalem. Stay there until you receive the gift. John baptized with water. But in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. Saying, you, you know, John was baptiz baptizing with water. Like we do. Jesus was baptized by John. And we do that. We, like last Sunday, we had a baptism. The baptism of water. But there is another baptism. And this baptism that is coming is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And when we think about baptism, the way you go down in the water and come up, when you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, there should be evidence that you have the Holy Spirit in you. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse 6 says, So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? Because according to them, they thought he's the king who is coming to deliver them from the Roman uh, Empire and oppression. And they expected Jesus to come in, you know, with all the attire of the king and just do something. And they kept asking, when is it? Now that you have risen from the dead, when are you doing this? When are we? And, and you know, earlier on, People like J John, is it John and James or Peter and James? They were asking which side can I sit? Can I sit on the right or the other one on the left? Because they thought this is the kind of kingdom that the Lord is bringing. But Jesus said, the father alone has the authority to set those dates and times. And they are not for you to know. Amen. There is a There is a scriptural searching and studying that is called eschatology. This is the study of end times. And there are so many people who invest to know when is it that Jesus is coming. And they get into really understanding the prophecies and even trying to dis discern the times and the season. It is well and good.
one time i sat in that class and i felt confused and terrified and just said lord i'm going to stick with this verse that says only the father <laughs> only the father alone knows he has the authority to set those dates we've had of even cults that tell people sell your things because it is time and when it doesn't happen they they commit mass murder but only the father knows and they are not for you to know i'm not discouraging people from studying eschatology ghost study but jesus said it is not for you to know so what is important if the study of knowing when he is coming and the dates of and the times is coming is not for us to know what is important in verse 8 he says but you will receive power don't bother with all those things because there is something that is very important you will receive power when the holy spirit comes upon you you will receive power jesus to the disciples focus on what is important focus on the holy spirit because when the holy spirit comes upon you you become powerful you stop becoming ordinary you become extraordinary you stop uh, operating in the natural you start operating in the supernatural when the holy spirit comes upon you you will receive power praise the name of the lord and this power that you receive will make you to be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere there's so many people who say i need power i need power father give me power what are you doing with the power this empowerment of the holy spirit is to make you a witness again we see a uh, a name that is related with the with the with the justice you know advocate huh witness what does the witness do what does the witness do testify praise the name of the lord ask your neighbor again do you have him in you are you a witness You know I love where I grew up in in East Africa in Kenya there is a tendency the moment you got born again when you meet a believer we had to testify and I think we should start that here <laughs> Amen So I remember uh where I was staying and maybe I have a a, a 20 gal- gallons of of water on my back and I meet a believer it doesn't matter whether I have this 20 I, I, if I don't testify they will start saying she, uh, she backs lead it, it was that serious praise the name of the lord and so i would wait and say hey, hey, praise the lord and then i tell i testify what jesus has done so next run maybe i'm going for firewood and i was we were living in moranga where the hills are like that so with my firewood on the back i meet another lady who is born again hey how are you and maybe we met yesterday and i testified but even now i have to testify how many grew up that way okay ruta waira you know you testifying i don't know whether pastor uh, it's it's the same in uganda uh-huh. did you give a word oh let me tell you in kenya hey and it is a it is a very good good it's a good habit praise the name of the lord and so some of the believers i remember when i got saved because i got saved when i was very young so and this pressure of testifying is a lot i would listen to other people's testimony and testify that and then one time my brother sat me down <laughs> said when when did you ever drink beer <laughs> because <laughs> <laughs> because you're saying you are a, a drunkard and Jesus saved you you are a rob- so my brother sat down me uh, sat me down and gave me some sense he says no you don't testify what you hear it is from what the lord has done and then years later there was another t- way people would testify and they say oh digwete gotithia kana gochoka na thutha i have not felt or had like i can go backward yeah or slack 
and one time uh, um, uh, a fellow uh, brother <laughs> he's the current pastor in, in in the church in Moranga said by the way mom tell me these people who keep saying they have not felt like going back what if they feel like going back what will happen and then i started thinking oh, that that testimony is really not making because there are times you'd feel like going back praise the name of the lord and so i we we continue growing to know that uh from our morning glory or my morning devotion when you now meet a believer you will tell them oh in fact today i was studying the book of psalms and i am so blessed to know that the lord is my shepherd i will not want should we start that here yes. amen you make that phone call and you first give me a testimony and then i give you a testimony When you receive the power, you become a witness. You testify, you tell people about Jesus everywhere. And the Lord is saying in Jerusalem, meaning beginning from where you are, you're staying throughout Judea, going to the neighborhood in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now you left Kenya and you left testimony. You're not witnessing, you're not telling people about Jesus and you're at the far ends of the earth. Tell your neighbor even here, testify. Praise the name of the Lord. Because that is what the Lord wants us to do when we have the spirit in us. And the Bible says after he said that he was taken up into a cloud. And while they were watching and they could no longer see him. So his last words, you know the way you, you care about what are the last words. The last words of Jesus was you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and when you receive that power the manifestation of that power is that you become a witness you cannot keep quiet about jesus you witness in jerusalem you witness in judea you witness in samaria you witness to the uttermost parts of the earth. and i want to conclude by this in the book of uh second i mean acts chapter two i'm gonna just read what, verse one to four and then we pray and we can continue from there next sunday so on the day of Pentecost, all believers were meeting together in on one place. Praise the name of the Lord. We have uh, the upper room fellowship and we call this, uh, that fellowship, the meeting place for all believers. It's from that verse. All believers were meeting in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. And it filled the house where they were sitting. So the entrance of the Holy Spirit was marked by wind, rolling mighty wind storm. He didn't come. You know the way sadly and then you're like, oh, you're here. No. When he came... <laughs> He came and everyone knew he is. Then what looked like flames of tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled. I want you to mark that word filled. Filled meaning there is no space for anything else. You are already filled. Everyone present was filled with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them ability. Praise the name of the Lord. And I want to pause there because from there we will see as people speak in other languages and in other tongues, who gives them ability? The Holy Spirit. The first manifestation of what Joel prophesied is here happening in this upper room where the believers are all gathered. And there is evidence, tongues as of fire resting upon each and every one of them. And then he gave them ability. 
He gave them utterance to even speak in other languages. Praise the name of the Lord. So the Holy Spirit gives abilities or gifts. And that's why I'm going to pause so that next Sunday we can pick up from there about the gifts that he gives for you to witness for you to remain in righteousness the gifts that he gives praise the name of the lord are we good any questions you can write down your question and maybe we can address it now or address it next time before this we start the series of the gifts so we understand that the holy spirit was there even before the beginning of the world and its existence we understand that the holy spirit was promised to be poured out we also understand that the holy spirit is a spirit of god we understand that he is a comforter he is a teacher he is an advocate he is the power of God and that power makes us to be witnesses and there are gifts that he gives and that's where we will pick it up next Sunday amen can we stand on our feet if you have a question note it down and we are going to address it later let's pray heavenly father in the name of jesus we thank you thank you because you have given us the helper the advocate the comforter the teacher one who guides us and reminds us of all things we thank you because when we are baptized with the Holy Ghost, we receive power to become witnesses. And we pray, King of all glory, that you may help each and every one of us to yield and surrender to your leading, to yield and surrender to your teaching, to yield and surrender and walk in obedience, Lord, of what you're guiding us to become. We give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before we sit down, if you're here and you've not given your life to Jesus, this promise of the Spirit is for those who love the Lord and follow his commandments. And you're saying, I would like to give my life to Jesus. You can show me by raising your hand and we're going to pray together. Or maybe you are saying, yes, I need Jesus I need to receive his gift too. And maybe you're watching online. I want you to pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the price that you paid for my sins. Thank you because today you have sent the helper. And as I begin my journey in faith, I will not walk alone. For the Holy Spirit is here. I open up my heart and I accept you, Jesus. Be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer and you'd like more resources to grow in faith, reach us out uh, from the channel or platform you're watching from or you can send us an email at info at gloriouspowerchurch.org and you'll get resources on how to continue growing in faith. Amen. Can we give the Lord a shout of praise? <laughs>